It's time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Hello, everybody. Yes, it's the new gay family series starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. Brought to you by the Jell-O family of desserts. J-E-L-L. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O Fioca puddings. Yes, sir. And now Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers, it's late afternoon, and George Cooper is on his way home from the bank. He just got his car out of Miller's garage where he left it to be overhauled, and he's on his way to Sally's beauty parlor where he left his wife, Liz, to be overhauled. <laughs> he, uh, he pulls to a stop by an attractive girl standing on the corner. Going my way, baby? Oh, hi, George. Oh, oh, I, I didn't know it was you, Liz. Oh, George, you've pulled that same corny gag every time you pick me up for the last ten years. <laughs> well, it always gets a rise out of you. Well, not today. Hey, come on, get in. Well, I'm trying. What are you doing, Liz? You can't open the door with your elbows. Use your hands. I can't. My nail polish isn't dry. <laughs> oh, I can't do it. Well, you're certainly being a big help. Well, I'm thinking. Uh, try using your teeth. Oh, skip it. You just drive on home, and I'll run along behind you. A breeze will dry my polish. Oh, I'm just kidding you, honey. Here, I'll open the door. Well, thank you. You know, George... Before we were married, you would have leaped out of the car, sprinted around to the other side, and swung open the door for me. Well, that was ten years ago. If I did that today, I'd have a heart attack. If you did that today, I'd have a heart attack. <laughs> well, you're in a good mood. Oh, I'm sorry, George, but while I was in the beauty parlor, Sally told me some very disturbing news. Oh, there's a strike in the henna factory. <laughs> no, it was really serious. Now... Who do you think is giving a party and hasn't invited us? Elsa Maxwell? Oh, if you're going to be smart, Alecky, I won't tell you. <laughs> okay. I mean it. I won't tell you. No, okay by me. Begging will get you nowhere. <laughs> well, all right, I'll tell you. The Atterberries are having a costume party Halloween night, and they didn't invite us. What? It's true, so help me. Oh, I don't believe it. Who, who told you a thing like that? Sally, my beauty operator. Oh, well, I might have known. How does Sally find out everything? I don't know. I think she has a wire recorder hidden in the hair dryer. <laughs> but she's always right. Oh, ridiculous. What reason would the Atterburys have for not inviting us to their party? Well, I thought you might know. Is everything all right at the bank? Well, certainly. Oh, this doesn't make sense. We... Well, we probably just haven't received our invitation yet. It'll be there in the morning mail. Well, if it isn't, I know what I'm going to do. What? I'm going to RSVP without being A-S-K-E-D. Liz, come and eat breakfast and stop looking for the mailman. You're pushing your nose all out of shape against the window. No, I'm not, George. Um, no, I'm not, George. Why doesn't that mailman come? Well, maybe because it's only 8 o'clock in the morning. But Mr. Negley's usually here by this... Oh, I know the answer. It's Katie's day off. He starts at the other end of the route when she's not here to give him his breakfast coffee. <laughs> Smart operator. Say, how's Katie doing with him? Making any headway? Oh, yes. She's gotten him to the lap-sitting stage. No. Yeah. He finally agreed to sit on her lap. <laughs> He sits on her lap? Well, he's so small, George. She'd squash him. <laughs> oh, darn it. Where is he? This is our last chance. If that invitation doesn't come this morning, we'll know the Atterbury's deliberately snubbed us. Look, Liz, if the Atterbury's want to give a party and not ask us, it's their business. They, they probably have a very good reason. There couldn't be any good reason for not asking us. We're their closest friends. 
They couldn't do a thing like that to us. Well, we'd given parties without asking them. That was different. I had a very good reason. <laughs> All right, I can't argue with that kind of feminine logic. Anyway, you, you only have a beauty operator's rumor that they're giving a party at all. Oh, no. No, I checked on it. I had Katie call the Atterbury's maid last night, and they are having a party. Well, I don't understand it. Oh, there's Mr. Negley. Yeah, but your breakfast is getting cold. Well, I'm not hungry. Mr. Negley, am I glad to see you? Really? <laughs> well, I I always look forward to seeing you, too. Oh. Well, thank you. May I have our mail, please? Is Katie home? No. May I have our mail, please? You know, Mrs. Cooper, I like Katie. Mm. <laughs> Someday, if things go well, maybe she let me put my stamp on her envelope. Uh, Mr. Negley, will you give me our mail, I'd please? I'd love to change her zone number to mine. <laughs> but she's really too good for me. She's first-class matter. Yes, could I have... She's better than that. She's air mail special delivery. Well, I'm sure she is. Registered. Look, <laughs> Mr. Negley, someday I hope you and Katie settle down and raise a lot of little postcards. But right now, will you please give me our mail? Oh, yes, I have a letter for you here somewhere. Oh, here it is. I'll take it. Oh. Well, you see, Grabby? <laughs> You've only got half of it. it. It served you right. Well, this might, this might be it. Let's see. You are cordially invited. Quick, what does the other half say? To bring your car home for service. <laughs> Great. Isn't there another letter for us? No, that's all. Maybe you made a mistake. Please. <laughs> there isn't a man in postal service who sorts his mail more carefully than Harrison Q. Negley. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Well, well, let me take a look. Maybe it's stuck down there someplace. Take your hands off my mail bag. Mr. Negley, this is more important than you think. You're tampering with the U.S. mail. Oh, now look what you've done. I'm all unsorted. <laughs> and heaven knows what you've done to my fragile. <laughs> oh, why didn't I stay in Puzzle Pose? Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Negley. I thought sure I'd get a letter from Mrs. Atterbury. Here, I'll help you sort. Something. No, no, just leave me alone. And if you're talking about Mrs. Atterbury's party, I delivered those invitations last week, and you didn't get one, and I'm glad. Do you hear me? Glad, glad, glad! Let's pause for a moment. Lucille Ball and Richard Denning will return in My Favorite Husband right after these messages. To find out more about old-time radio, old-time video, and the pleasures of listening to audiobooks, visit the Audiobook Club website, www.audiobookclub.com, where you can get four audiobooks for just one penny. MediaBay.com And now, let's return to My Favorite Husband. Well, Rudolph. Curiosity is about to kill a cat. Guess who just called on the phone? Who, Lotus Bud? <laughs> Liz Cooper. She and George are down at the corner drugstore, and they want to drop by. Oh, Iris, I wanted to watch television. But you can't. They're coming over. You mean I have to miss Hopalong Cassidy? <laughs> this may be the night he gets killed. <laughs> I guarantee he won't. Now, they'll be here any minute. Help me pick up the papers on the floor. And remember, not a word about the Halloween party. Well, don't worry about me. I'm not the blabbermouth in this family. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see their faces when they find out we're giving a surprise Halloween party for them. Yeah. And at their house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Does everyone know what to do? Oh, sure. We're meeting at Cooper's side door at 8.30 and sneaking in through the kitchen. And then when they... There they are. Now remember, don't even mention Halloween. Liz girl, George boy. Hi, Iris. George boy, Liz girl. Hi, folks. <laughs> Well, 
I hope you don't mind that we came over without an invitation. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> What's new, Liz? Oh, nothing. What's new with you? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> How about you, Rudolph? Rudolph? Yes, hop along. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, no, nothing new with me. Well, nothing new with me either. Nobody asked you. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the holiday weekend, what are you folks going to do? What holiday weekend? Monday is Halloween. Rudolph! Hmm? Monday is Halloween! No! <laughs> yes. Halloween, when people give parties and everybody comes in costume and you invite your best friends. Huh. Sounds like fun. <laughs> It's too bad someone isn't giving a party. <gasps> oh, Liz. Yes? There's something I've been meaning to ask you. Yes? Are you doing anything? No, not a thing. We'd love to come. What time? <laughs> Eight o'clock. Fine, fine, yeah, fine. Yes. Eight o'clock Wednesday morning, we start collecting newspapers for the Salvation Army. <laughs> oh. Uh, come on, Liz. We'd better go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, George. Uh... It's for such a worthy cause, Iris. Let's not wait till Wednesday morning. Let's start sooner, say, uh, Monday night. Well, uh, I'd like to, dear, but, but, but... Would you like an ashtray for that butt, darling? <laughs> uh, 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 my mother, my mother has been feeling well, and we're having dinner with her, yes. Yes. Yes, we always spend Halloween with the old witch. <laughs> Well, I'm only trying to help. <laughs> don't bother. We don't have to have a brick atterbury fall on us to get the idea. Come on, George. Good night. Well, George, now are you satisfied? Uh, you were right, Liz. I can't get over it. I, I don't know what to do. Well, I do. While they're having their party, we'll soap their windows and kick over their garbage can. And stick a pin in their doorbell. No, I have a better idea, George. We'll give our own Halloween party and invite everyone but the Atterberries. There's not room in this town for both of us, George. The Atterberries must go. <laughs> And now, back to the Coopers. There's a certain party in Sheridan Falls who is upset because she hasn't been invited to a certain party. If Liz only knew that the certain party is a surprise party for her, she'd be the most surprised party of all. Well, Liz is determined to get even, so right now, she's busy inviting all her friends to an opposition party that she's giving. Hello, Mary. Liz Cooper. Uh, we're giving a Halloween party tomorrow night, and we wondered if you... What? Oh, your mother's sick? Well, some other time. Goodbye. How are you doing, Liz? If the next three couples can come, we'll have six people at the party. <laughs> that doesn't sound like much of a party. Well, we can keep moving and make it look like a crowd. <laughs> Hello, Betty Ray? Liz Cooper. Uh, we're giving a party tomorrow night and... Oh, you can't? Oh, she is. Well, goodbye. And tell your mother I hope she feels better. Bye. Another refusal. I don't get it. That makes the 14th one. There must be an epidemic of sick mothers. <laughs> well, I'll keep trying. Somebody's mother has to be healthy. I never heard of so... Hello, Margaret. Liz Cooper. I wondered if you and Hans could... Oh, you couldn't? <laughs> I didn't even ask you yet. <laughs> oh, you heard. Oh, your father's sick. Too bad. Well, bye, Margaret. Well, at least she's different. Her father's sick. Mm. I'll bet he caught it from someone's mother. <laughs> Don't you care, honey. You and I will have our own little party right here. George, something awful is wrong. Our best friends all turned us down. All of them. Well, forget it, baby. We'll take a course at Arthur Murray's and be successes again. <laughs> oh, it isn't funny. We're social misfits. We're being shunned by society. Oh, now let's not get carried away. Well, that's true. 
First the Atterbury's and then all our other friends, making excuses and acting funny. And that's not all. What do you mean? Even the birds have left our birdhouse. <laughs> they always go south this time of year. But this year they went early. <laughs> George, there's something horrible the matter with one of us. One of us? Yes, and I know it isn't you, because you're just as wonderful as you've ever been. It's me, and I'm holding you back. Oh, now, Liz, now, don't talk like that. George, you're my best friend. Is, is there something even you haven't been able to tell me? Have I been careless about the little things? Well, now that you mention it, there is something I noticed. What? You've only been taking 30 seconds for your 60-second workout. Oh, George. How can you make jokes when we're social outcasts? Uh... Oh, well, now, honey, it isn't worth crying over. I'm not crying. I don't care about those people. I hate them. Well, I'm going to call up Atterbury right now and ask him what this is all about. No, he won't tell you. He'll be embarrassed. I know, George. I've got it. Let's go to the Atterbury's party. Liz, have you cracked your crock? <laughs> Don't you see? It's a costume party, so nobody will know us, and, and we'll mingle with the guests and say, isn't it shocking about the Coopers? And, and when they answer us, we'll find out the awful truth. <laughs> You've got something there, Liz, but uh, what kind of costume shall we wear? Well, the way people are acting, we ought to go dressed as a couple of skunks. <laughs> Drive faster, George. We'll be late for the party. Well, I still don't think we ought to go. These costumes we're wearing are so silly. Two policemen's uniforms and water pistols. Ah, uh, you're just mad because you're a sergeant and I'm a lieutenant. Kiss me, sergeant. That's an order. Ah, <laughs> uh, couldn't you have gotten some other costumes? I told you the only other thing he had left was two halves of a horse. Well, what's, what's the matter with that? At least it would have been unusual. I'll say it would. They were both hind ends. <laughs> George, can't you drive faster? Bad enough to be uninvited. Let's not be late, too. I'm doing 35. Oops, there goes another one. Another what? Well, every time a car goes to pass us, the driver sees our cop costumes and slows down. <laughs> We've got 15 cars lined up in back of us. <laughs> How do you like that? Hey, let's tune in the police calls. Let's play cops and robbers. Which station is it, George? Uh, way down at the end there. Oh, yeah. Calling car 29, car 29. Investigate auto wreck at corner Elm and 8. If car not too badly damaged, make offer. The chief is looking for a new car. Oh, great. Watch for robberies in Northside Residential District. Thieves in costumes crashing Halloween parties. Victims report some dressed as policemen. Uh-oh. And you had to pick up policemen's uniforms for us. Yeah. Oh, I don't like the feel of this. Let's go home. Oh, don't be silly, George. No one will bother us. Well, all right. Oh, oh no. Pull over the claim. <laughs> now what do we do? He'll think we're those crooks. Well, don't stop. Keep on going. Nothing doing. I'll just uh, have to explain and hope he believes me. No, if he doesn't, we'll miss the party. Pretend you're a real cop. Liz. Go ahead. Well, I don't say anything. And why are we two holding up traffic? Oh, excuse me, Lieutenant, I didn't see you. Oh, uh, that's all right. I was speaking to the Lieutenant. I apologize, Lieutenant. Uh, that's all right, uh, officer. Drive on, Sergeant. Oh, Lieutenant, uh, any fighter knows of those masquerading crooks? Uh, yes. There's no truth to that report. Forget about them. Drive on, Sergeant. Attention all cars. Keep special lookout for criminals in masquerade costumes. Drive on, Sergeant. Uh, just a minute. <laughs> I don't remember seeing you two on the force before. Well, uh, uh, you see, we're really plain clothes men, but our plain clothes are being cleaned. <laughs> I thought so. Let me see your credentials. Certainly. Well, what do you know? Must have left them in my plain clothes. 
<laughs> That's all. Oh, no, it isn't. Let me see your credentials. What? Maybe you're the fake one. I can prove I'm a real cop. How? I got a witness. Sergeant? <laughs> yes, Lieutenant. Sergeant, am I a real cop? Yes, Lieutenant. There you are. Drive on, Sergeant. <laughs> Just a minute. Let me see your badge. Let me see your badge. There. Sheridan Falls Police Force 158. Huh. Here, take a look at mine. That's enough. <laughs> That's so fast. Well, let me see them. Post Toasties Junior G. <laughs> well, you see, we're not local cops. What's that Post Toasties business? That's for my serial number. <laughs> All right, you're coming with me. Oh, you really fixed this up, Liz. He'll never take us alive, George. I still got my gun one squirt for each of us. <laughs> Come on, out of the car. Oh, look, officer, we're not crooks. My name is George Cooper. I live at 321 Bundy Drive, and I'm vice president of the Sheridan Falls National Bank. Now, if you'll just follow us home, I'll show you plenty of identification. Well, okay, but no funny business. I'll just get in the back seat and go with you. No, thank you. Drive on, Sergeant. Oh, cut it out, Liz. Okay. Huh? This is our house, officer. Well, it better be. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look there at the side door, some figures slipping into our house. And they're in costume. Yeah. We found the gang. Shh. Wait a minute. Have you led me into a trap? No, no. <laughs> Leave us. We don't know anything about it. Those people are crooks. And they're robbing our house. Oh, what do we do? We better call the police. Yeah, we better call... What do you think I am, Western Union? Well, we don't know if you're real or not. Let's not start that again. They'll hear us. Oh, come on. We'll catch them red-handed. Okay. Quiet, everybody. We'll sneak up to the door. Okay, now let's rush him. All right, everybody, hands up. Iris! Mr. Atterbury! Liz, girl! Good boy! I knew it. You're all in this together. You mean this is a surprise party for us? Yes. You didn't suspect a thing, did you? Well, not a thing. And what wonderful costumes you have. Okay. Hands up, everybody. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Introduce us to your friend, Liz. I can't get over it. A surprise party and all the time we thought nobody liked us. Now listen to me. Hands up, everybody. <laughs> look, look, fella. You made your entrance. The gag's over. Oh, here we have all these wonderful friends and we thought nobody liked us. Uh, uh, hands up. Please. <laughs> Look, look, Buster, you're overdoing your act. And take that false face off. It's horrible. Won't anybody put their hands up? I'm going to tell my sergeant about this. Oh, George. And we thought nobody liked us. Yes, Lucille. Bob, if I'm not being too personal, how many people do you think eat jello puddings? You know, I've been wondering the same thing. You have. How did you happen to ask me that just at this moment? Well, I don't know. It was just the next line in my script. Uh, <laughs> why don't we ask a fortune teller, Bob? My rates are very reasonable. You, a fortune teller? Yeah, don't tell a soul. You see, my real name isn't Lucille. It's Crystal. Crystal Bow. <laughs> Step right into my tent and I will tell the future for you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Are you Madame Ball? Cross my palm with silver. But your hand is bandaged. What, what happened? My last customer crossed my palm with silver. Well, who was he? Uh, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> What is it you wish to know? I know all. Nothing is unknown to me. Now, wait a minute. Where did I put that crystal ball? Oh, here it is. Tell me, madam, as you gaze into the future, do you see any 
jello chocolate pudding, absolutely luscious with deep down chocolatey goodness? Well, let me take a look. Let's see, there's the results for tomorrow's races. We don't want those. Uh, the inauguration of our next president. No, no, no. Uh, who's going to play in the Rose Bowl game? No, 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 no. Nothing here about jello chocolate pudding. Well, how about jello butterscotch pudding with that buttery brown sugar flavor? Or jello vanilla pudding, rich and smooth as cream? Oh, no, let me see. Aha! Uh -huh. Are they swell desserts for the kids? Yes. Or do you simply add milk and they cook to velvety perfection in just about five minutes? That's it. Nope, don't see a thing about them. <laughs> you forgot to cross my palm with silver. All right, here. Well, look at all the jello puddings. Everyone's crazy about them. Old people are saying jello puddings are fine. Young people are saying jello puddings are great. Gay people are saying jello puddings are swell. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to listen to Lucille Ball and My Favorite Husband again next week, presented by... J-E-L-L-O, -L. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O duck. The Oka pudding just so is.